Okuma fans, Charlie with the Gossiker Application staff got another video for you today. It's come to my attention that uh, there are quite a few people out there that aren't utilizing their collision avoidance software to the maximum potential. I figured I'd make a quick video to show you a few of the uh, a few of the tools that Akuma gives us to help us set up repeat jobs. As you can see from my graphic here, I am today working on a, uh, an LT3000 twin spindle, twin turret machine. And uh, I've already got the process set up. I've got a couple of other videos that talk about exactly how to model tools and attach them to the turret. Uh, so I won't repeat that. But what I would like to show you is the, um, the actual program that I made what it's going to do and how I can facilitate a changeover to the next part. So here I have my setup. It's all set. If I go into my automatic mode, let's just go ahead and run it. It's a very simple program and I'm in idle stop. Everybody's got that at least once. Okay. So now I reset the machine and by hitting cycle slam, we'll see that my first move is a facing move with turret number one. Then I go into a, a little pinch turn with both the upper and lower turrets. Uh, this was uh, this program was written right out of advanced one touch programming software so it's really really seamless the way it um, uh, the way it functions. So once I'm done with this, I'm going to move the turrets to a clearance position, get them out of the way so that the W axis can slide over and pick up the part. And then we're going to come to point number one. The collision avoidance software will automatically transfer the blank for us. Whoops, forgot I was drilling. The uh, uh, collision avoidance software will automatically transfer the blank if I'm using torque skip G22. If I do not use torque skip, like if I were parting off bar stock or my collet didn't have a blind pocket, it's going to do exactly what you see here, which is shows the transfer, but the part stays over here. And I just could do a little facing move, uh, cutting an angle in the sub spindle, but you can't really tell because I don't have material here. So that's going to be, um, Tip number one is how in the world can we transfer the blank from one side to the other if we're not using torque skip? Basically, we're going to have to do a manual changeover. So the first thing I want to do, I've already done my, uh, my collision avoidance population for this under process shape. Here is my spindle one. This is the one that I want to have in the very beginning. And so I am going to save the machining envelope that uh, the machining envelope is defined as the chuck, the jaws and the material or call it nose, depending on what you're using. So let's just go ahead and call this the CAS test or oh, nope, SAMP. That's the same as my, uh, my part name, but I'm going to put a number one in there just so that I know that this is the, uh, the machining envelope in the beginning. I've done that for the, um, for the first spindle. I also want to do the same thing for the second spindle. Notice that here I'm empty. I have no, uh, no material in because I'm not doing simultaneous cutting. So I'm going to save the side two machining envelope. CAS SAMP one, just as I did the, uh, the first spindle. And we will cancel that result because all I really wanted to do was save my machining envelope. There's spindle one, there's spindle two, but that is what the what the um, the setup looks like when I first push cycle start. Now I'm going to get in here and I'm going to define what the um, what the machine condition will look like after the uh, the part transfer. So obviously for spindle number one. I'm going to delete the model of the, the blank and now I will save machining envelope again, but this time I'm going to call this uh, CAS-SAMP2 
Okay, and we'll exit. We'll cancel that result because uh, I don't want to transfer the information to CAS. And for my spindle two, let's do the same thing. But this time, I'm going to add a blank. I've already created it. There it is. That is what my subspindle will look like after the transfer. So now let's save the machining envelope. And this is CAS-SAMP2. Okay. Now, the, one, of the, uh, one of the things that I want to point out, you did see me save spindle 1 and spindle 2. So now in my machining envelopes, you'll see that each one has a SAMP1 and a SAMP2. If you try to do what I'm about to do, and you don't have an identically named collision avoidance machining environment for both spindles, it will generate an alarm. Now I'm going to get into my program and I'm going to edit. Let's get in here and oh, let's say right about here, I'm going to add a statement. C-A-S-C-M-E and now we'll just, that uh, stands for the collision avoidance software loading the collision machining envelope. And I will add the name SAMP1. Whoops, don't forget the hyphen. If it's not identical, I'm in big trouble. So this statement will load CAS SAMP1, the one that I saved, and it'll load it to both spindles. Now, if I do my AB divide, I, the only reason I divided my programs is because I want to repeat another CAS CME statement, but I want to do it down here. C-A-S-C-M-E, read the machining envelope, but this time I want to do, uh, ooh, wow, CAS hyphen SAMP2. Now let's combine them. Okay, select and quit. Yes. Now you all saw what happened just a few minutes ago where the blank stayed over here and did not transfer. Well, this time, first things first, let me reclamp my main spindle because um, uh, when I did my transfer, it did not uh, it did not reclamp the main spindle, and I know I will get an alarm if I don't. Boom. M83, and there we go. Now we're clamped. So let's take a look at this now, see what happens. Auto, program select. Pick up my program and say, okay. Let's go back into my full collision avoidance screen and watch what happens as soon as I hit cycle slam, it reverted. It read the new machining envelope and now I am cutting away. So I'm going to speed things up a little bit so that I don't have to sit here and think of things to talk about while we watch this program run. Faster, faster. All right, a little pinch turn action. The only thing missing here is the noise of the chips hitting the back of the uh, machining envelope. Go, baby, go. Okay, we're gonna park the lower turret just like I did before, pick up the drill and punch a little hole. All right, now once this guy parks, W axis is gonna come over and pick it up. Because I'm not using G22, it will not automatically populate the environment, but watch this. Bonk, look at that. Once it read that secondary, um, uh, that secondary cast me statement, it said, okay, there's no material over here. Or if I were doing bar stock with the part off, you'd see the, I would add the little stub of material here, but there's our half done part over on this side. How handy is that? Okay, so now I've got a proven program that I know is good. Um, I want to facilitate a little, uh, hmm, how do I say this? I would like to make my life a little easier the next time I set up this job. So we already know that there are several points of data that are gonna go along with this. For starters, my zero offset 
for both spindles is going to be important. My W offset for both spindles, that's important. And also the um, population of the tools. So once I know that my setup is exactly as I want it, I'm gonna do a couple of things just to make my life a little easier. First off, I am going to save the um, uh, machining environment. You already saw me do that, but I can also do one other thing called the uh, saving the setup data from my spindle one setup. I'll arrow over one time and look at this. I've got setup save. If I save my setup, it will automatically make it the same as my, uh, my uh, machine program name and say okay and now in my MD1 directory you'll notice that I've got a bunch of new new files that represent the um, uh, the work zeros both sides okay and now I'm gonna get over here here is my collision avoidance data for the tools everything's in there let's do the same thing if I arrow over this time twice I have a button for tool list save. And it automatically populated cast sample one, and I say, okay. Now, let's say hypothetically, I went and I broke down this job. So I got over here and I detached the tool and took this guy and detached the tool. And that guy detached the tool. Let's go over to my sub spindle and do exactly the same thing. Detach the tool. I set up another job, did whatever the heck it was I needed to do, uh, made more money basically. Now I'm going to come over here and because I set up another job, let's just set that to zero so that we see some very drastic changes. This is synthesizing having set up a whole nother job and made my life, uh, made my life easy and made some money. Now let's look at our collision avoidance. The turrets are completely unpopulated. Now when I go to set up this job again, first thing I can do is I can get into my process shape and I can read the machining envelope. Let's pick up cast sample one, there it is. That was already saved in my, uh, my machine library. And let's go over to spindle two, process shape and read the machining envelope for CAS SAMP1. Okay, exit, transfer to CAS. So now I have just recalled all the collision avoidance data for the chucks. Zoop, jaws, blank, chuck body, call it nose, fixture, whatever the heck I was doing, but my turret is still unpopulated. However, I've got all of this stuff right here. How the heck do I call it up? Check this out. When I do my program select and I pick up my program, if you look over to the right, here's a couple of blocks that I'm certain a bunch of you have not used or seen before. If I highlight the setup data reading and say execute and the tool list, I say execute. Now when I say okay, it asks me, do you wanna overwrite my zeros? Heck yeah, I do because they were set to zero. Now look at this, my collision avoidance is already populated with the same, uh, the same data that I had in the previous program. And even better, look at there. Now my zero offset has come back and it took me that long. Let's, whoops, let's clamp our uh, main spindle one more time because I wanna prove that M83, clamp on the material. There's my red light, go into auto and cycle slam. Boom. Even though I broke everything down and put it all back in, I did not have to reteach everything on the machine. I just saved my data when I was done and uh, recalled it simply by doing the program select. You'll get your old offset, you'll get your old tools. Everything is right back in play. And of course, because I still have my little tricky cast me statement in there, after the, um, uh, after the part transfer, you'll see the blank go to the right. Go baby, go baby, go. 
Zoop. And pick off. Grab it. Pull it back. Zoop. And reload. Boom. How cool is that? All right, let's go ahead and reset and let's talk about a couple of things that uh, are probably right on your mind. What happens if I already have tools that are loaded here? Uh, this is my turret number one and I'm going to detach tool one, the one that I'm obviously using. And I'm going to come over here and grab up a really funky tool and attach it to position one. All right, there's my leftover from the previous job. Do a little angle change, you notice that, yeah, that's a Y-axis live tool. There we go, yeah, let's zoom in just a little bit just to say I did so you can see that, yeah, okay, that's a little Y-axis with two live tools on it. That was leftover from the previous job. If I do program select, pick up my cast sample, make sure my setup and tool list are set to execute and say okay. When it reads this, it will automatically detach that funky y-axis tool to put my tool on. However, if I have another tool loaded in a station I'm not using, let's say tool position number four, I'm going to turret attach on position number four, so now there's an unused tool block that's on the turret station. If I do my program select, make sure it's execute, okay, overwrite the offsets, and boom, go back to collision avoidance. You notice it did not detach the previous tool. It is not going to monkey with turret positions that you are not actively using in the program you're selecting. This way, if you happen to have a block or a tool, you got something left over that you're keeping in the turret, it won't automatically delete it. If you are pulling it out and you want to get rid of it for collision safety or uh, collision reasons, just make sure that you highlight it and say tool detach. And there we have it. Fancy stuff, huh? One more thing that I always do just to make my life a little more uh, organized. If I am in my uh, MD1, my machine directory one, you notice I have all of these programs related to CAS SAMP. So if I were to uh, click on new file, make a directory, now I can name it CAS hyphen SAMP or whatever makes sense to me. And I can now transfer all of these files over to the um, uh, over into this folder so that everything's all set in one shot. Let's go ahead and do it just to say I did my favorite way. I should probably explain that, huh? From MD1, if you click on directory display and then click on another display, it allows me to split the screen. The left side's gonna be the MD1. The right side, let's make it also the MD1. So now I've got identical directories side by side. If I open up my CAS sample folder, now I could just copy right, copy right, so forth and so on, so that all of my uh, all of my CAS SAMP programs will reside inside that folder. Makes life easy. Hope this helps you out a little bit. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave me a comment, like and subscribe and all that other happy horse hockey from YouTube. Um, and if you need additional help, please feel free to reach out to your local Gossiker application staff. See you on the next one.